One of the really cool things about Sony Acid Music Studio is that it's uh, it's got a very intuitive warping algorithm built into it that will take your tracks and warp them. Uh, and when I say warp, I basically mean that it will take that track and it will make it conform to a specific tempo um, that you can define when you initially start using the track or later on. The beauty of this is that it uh, allows you to match that the tempo of that track up with the tempo of other clips and loops and things like that. So it's really great for remixing. Acid has always been a, uh, a great remix tool for a lot of musicians. So I'm going to show you guys how to work with clips and do a little bit of beat mapping. So I uh, have a project open, obviously. I've made a couple audio tracks right here, and um, I can do that uh, just by clicking on insert and um, going to audio track, and that'll add a new audio track into my project. And uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna find a clip or a uh, song to work with. So right down here in the file explorer in Acid, I can browse around on my hard drive and I can find loops. So in order to do that, I just need to click around on my hard drive and uh, I can go ahead and just go into my, my documents and I can browse to anywhere on my hard drive. I've got a loop here in the Acid folder that I've got. So I'm going to click on this one and uh, before I drag it into my project, I can actually also preview it just by clicking on the start preview. And that'll give me a little preview of the track. It'll start playing automatically. That's very useful for loops because it'll play that loop back for me. And then all I have to do is go ahead and click and drag and drop this onto a acid. Um, acid will take a moment or two and it will uh, figure out some of the data about this track and it'll build a peak, which will allow me to see the waveforms. Uh, so I can zoom in and out in acid very easily just by clicking and then using the the wheel on my mouse and that's really useful that's something i've always really liked about the sony products and um and then what i can do is i can resize this loop so what i'm going to do is i'm going to resize it a little bit you'll notice when i bring my mouse over to the edge right here of this waveform uh it turns into uh, another icon and this icon has two arrows on it if i click and i drag that icon's going to resize do a little resizing and clipping of this track so i'm going to hack off a little bit of silence right there on this track so now it starts up pretty immediately and if i turn on the metronome i can see how close it is to being on time with my current tempo so i can turn on the metronome just by enabling it right here and then hit play so that's obviously not correct uh, i can hear that that timing is just not right So that's not going to work if I want to do remixing or anything like that. So the next thing that I want to do now is I want to warp this track. I want to beat map this track. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to select clip properties. So this opens up the clip properties dialog box. And right here I can see the clip again, but I can make different edits to it. And so here under the acid type, there's a lot of different choices. There's loop, one shot, beat mapped. Beat mapped is typically what I'm going to want to go with if I'm working. Uh, especially with a longer track or something like that. I can also choose the method that I want to use. Um, and Elastique is a is the engine that is built into Acid for stretching tracks. And then there's the classic method. Uh, there's the, also the mode, Pro Efficient Soloist and, um, and Soloist Speech. These all have different settings and will sometimes lead to very different results, but Pro or Efficient are usually going to work pretty well for you. And uh, preserve pitch while stretching is also a good thing to do. If you don't have that clicked, you'll notice these other options go away and you'll hear a difference in the track. So in the stretch tab, I get this view of the waveform and you'll notice it has all these orange markers on the top right here. And it's got some various settings, initial tempo, things like that, how many beats I want per measure and so on and so forth. And what I really wanna do is I wanna go ahead, I wanna zoom in a little bit. I wanna take a look at this track. So I'm gonna zoom in right here. And you're gonna notice that that first block of empty space is still here uh, in this version of the waveform. And that's because I'm using non-destructive editing. 
Now, what I wanna do is I want to use this downbeat marker right here, and that's this blue marker. I wanna use this downbeat marker, and I wanna find the first major beat that happens in this track. So if I listen to it, I can. it's, it's a basic 4-4 kind of track, and I can hear that first beat. And that's a, that's a pretty basic beat right there. But what I wanna do is I wanna tell Acid that that's my first beat, my down beat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click, I'm gonna drag that blue marker right over to the beginning right here. And I can zoom in and get really close to this. And that's what I wanna do is I wanna zoom in, I wanna get real good and close to that first down beat. So now if I start playing, so right there I have a perfect loop going on and it sounds very tight and so that will beat map this track for me and now i can check these other i can check these other measures just by mousing back and forth i can click and each of these markers is a new measure and i can change these if i want but i want a basic far um, loop most of the time for most dance music that i'm going to be working with so if i just click you'll notice this measure becomes highlighted and then i can play and i can play that whole measure And that'll allow me to jump back and forth and check and make sure that everything is working. So once I've done that and I've kind of just checked and you can go through the whole track or if you feel pretty good about it, you know, you, you should be okay to be done. And once I've done those settings, I've set my downbeat. Again, Acid's very smart and it's going to find the beats of these tracks pretty efficiently. And you'll notice these look pretty good. These measures are broken up pretty nicely. And uh, so once I found all of those, I can just close up this window. And now if we listen to this track playing back again with the metronome on, it should sound much more on top of the metronome and in time with my project's tempo. So let's listen to that. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you'll notice right there, now the metronome is sitting right on top of the beat of this clip. And so the beauty of that is that now I can change the BPM of this project if I would like, and the song is going to follow along with it. So you can tell Acid's very smart there when it comes to the, to the looping of this track and especially the time correction of this track as well. So that's a very useful feature and that's a quick and easy way to be able to beat match a lot of tracks. Now what you can also do if you need to be, if you want to beat match a track, is you can use the beat mapper wizard. And to access that, you right click on a clip, click on clip properties, and now go to stretch again. And here you're gonna notice the button for beat mapper wizard. That's gonna open the beat mapper wizard. And Beatmapper is going to ask me a few questions. So Beatmapper is going to ask me to find the downbeat. Same thing that we just did previously here. And it's going to kind of take, take a guess at the downbeat. And it will ask me to hit play and see if that sounds right. Well, that's not right. It's definitely kind of halfway through a beat right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this downbeat marker. And I'll drag it. And I'll drop it much closer now to the beginning of that first downbeat. So I've dropped it right there at the beginning. And I'll hit play again. And I can hear it starts on the one, one, two, three, four, right there. So now I've got the downbeat set. So I can hit next. And when I hit next, now Acid's going to give me a full uh, measure right here to work with and test and see if I like the sound of it. So I can hit play. And it gives me a metronome as well. And the metronome, again, is very useful for being able to keep time and to know, okay, this loop is definitely on beat. So I can tell that that's on beat. So if I'm happy with that, uh, I can jump around. I can change things if I want. I can zoom in and out. I can take a look, take a look at other measures if I want. But I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to hit next. And now Beatmapper is going to do a little bit of thinking. And now in step three, this will allow me to jump back and forth again between all of the different measures that I've got in the song and take a listen to them as it plays. I can make sure that everything loops properly. And if there's any discrepancies, I can change them by dragging the markers around. But I really don't need to be doing that. So the beauty of that is that now I have a properly uh, matched and looped track that I can work with. And now all I need to do is hit next. 
So now BMapper is going to say that it's finished. It's going to ask me if I want to preserve the pitch of the track. And again, that's very useful because if I don't preserve the pitch, it's going to be obvious that the track is being time warped. And that may be an effect that you're going for, but typically that's not something that you want to be able to hear. So you do want to preserve the pitch. Uh, if you save the BeatMapper information with the file, that will save a another file uh, that will attach to this audio file that I've got that in the future ACID can read and it will be able to know the information that I've set for this track, the warp markers, things like that, and it will be able to just automatically set that track for any loop, uh, any project tempo that I were to drag it into into another project or anything like that. Um, and once I'm done, all I gotta do is hit finish and the track is going to be beat mapped. So again, using all of these different methods, uh, you can very easily take a track that is not necessarily um, perfect when it comes to timing, especially for remixing and things like that. Uh, you can either beat map it yourself or you can use the BeatMapper wizard in Acid and be able to set that track up to work essentially seamlessly with just about any other loops that you might get and import into your Sony Acid Music uh, Studio project. I hope this has been useful to you guys. As always, if you have questions or comments, get in touch with me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Tutor or at my email address, brian at obedia.com. Thanks as always, and until next tutorial, take care.